Welcome to Small Arm Solutions Crime Series, Volume 8. Today we are looking at the FIE Tenfalio GT-72B. This gun's been known by many names. This will, this will include the TIE Titan, the GT-27, Army Tenfalio Giuseppe, Italy Titan, XCAM GT-27, and the Talga. This is basically a 25 auto caliber pistol. Now looking at uh, some of the stats on it, you're looking at a single action. It does have a quarter cock position on it. So you can see we go back to quarter cock. Uh, that basically would be what your safety would be. You have a fixed blade front sight and a notch on the rear. You have an overall barrel length of 2.48 inches. It is a fixed barrel. Fixed barrel doesn't, doesn't move. The weight is 0.77 pounds. Overall length of 4.72 inches. You have a magazine capacity of 7 plus 1 rounds of 25 automatic ammunition. Now, the production ran from 1962 to 1990. In November of that year, uh, they filed for bankruptcy. Now, when we look at 25 caliber pistols, I think one of the first things I want to really discuss to you is calibers that are suitable for self-defense. 22, 25, 32, I do not consider these viable self-defense calibers. From my experience in 10 years in forensics and as a military contractor, these calibers tend to just piss people off, uh, unless you have somebody who is very much a wuss, uh, who having having a little a hole poked in him will will set him down. Uh, your average person, especially a criminal, is going to be jacked up on drugs and going to be up on adrenaline. This is merely going to piss off. Now, is it better than nothing? Yeah. Now, if you look at twenty five versus twenty two, for instance. Um, the 22 is a better cartridge. Uh, you have a higher velocity. You have a, a, a lead projectile that's soft. It's more apt to uh, expand. Why do we have 25 auto then? Well, the reason why we have 25 auto is reliability. A 22 long rifle, rim fire. Now, if you don't have uh, your primer mixture on the entire base of the cartridge, there's a good chance that you could get a, a misfire uh, if the cartridge doesn't, doesn't have, a, have the cartridge... Uh, primer compound around the full bottom, and especially if the firing pin is only got hits it in one location. So you have ignition for one, and you also have feeding. Uh, due to the lead projectiles, uh, it does cause reliability uh, issues with feeding. So the reliability is not that great uh, on a 22. However, with a 25, we have center fire. Center fire, and we have a full metal jacket round nose bullet. So with a full metal jacket round nose, that pretty much eliminates most of your uh, causes for you know, failure to feed. And with a pr the primer uh, being center fire, it eliminates most of your issues for as far as failure to fire. Now, another benefit that you do get with a 25 auto is because it's a center fire cartridge, you have semi specifications, which means you're going to have a specific type of a load where the pistol is designed around it. So you have better reliability that way with 22s, you have uh, big variations in powder charges and pressures and so forth. So they are much more uh, reliable uh, than the 25s and the 22s, however, but when they hit the target, they are, they're less effective. Now, again, these are basically breast pocket guns. Um, they tend to generally, uh, again, not, not be a very effective round. As far as I'm concerned, the lowest that I would go and feel safe would be a 380 auto. Uh, I would not go below that for a self-defense gun, but again, uh, it is better than nothing. Now, when you look at this pistol, it has some remnants of the Beretta 950. Uh, basically, where you have a single action, you have a complete open top design, uh, the slide. And one of the benefits that this gives you is it gives you uh, a full open ejection port. There's nothing for the cartridge case to catch on when it extracts and ejects. So it is a reliability enhancement. Now, I will say, considering most of the 25 autos that I've used throughout my career, this is probably one of the most reliable ones. It can be a little bit of a challenge uh, to load that round into the chamber, just do the way everything goes together. But once that rounds into the chamber, you pull the trigger, it will fire and it will fire fairly accurately. Um, it's a far better pistol than any of the Ravens, any of the Brycos or Jimenez or, or any of those uh, Phoenixes or whatever. This is a certainly uh, a more accurate and more reliable design. Uh, you do have to carry cocked and locked. You, you do have a safety on here, which is fire and safe. So you do, you do have that on there. Now the trigger on the other hand, this trigger here is extremely heavy uh, and it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's extremely heavy, and it's not that great of a, of a trigger pull. However, it does give you a better result than any of the other ones that I've, as I've mentioned, the Brico, the Jennings, the Lorsons, the Ravens, and, and so forth. It's a better trigger than that. Uh, overall, the way that they were built, uh, this is a much finer made pistol than any of those other ones as well. This is the type of a pistol that the 1968 Gun Control Act was made around. It was around small, compact pistols being imported into the country that were, quote, Saturday Night Specials. Now, once, this right, once the, that went into effect, you can no longer import. However, there was a loophole. 
you could import the parts and manufacture them here in the U.S. Now, when these were imported uh, as a complete gun, these were a, you know, a standard steel type of receiver or frame. Now, once they came to the U.S., they were cheapened up into that cheap Z-Mac material, the same which most of these uh, pocket pistols were manufactured out of, but certainly the quality went down drastically. So when uh, after the 1968 Gun Control Act, the parts were imported by a company called XCAM, and then they were manufactured uh, by that company. And once XCAM went bankrupt, they went uh, to FIE, or Firearms Import Export, uh, which made uh, the vast majority of the pistols in the United States. So overall, uh, the quality, uh, again, the Italian ones were a decent quality. Uh, you know, if you were to compare it to the Breda 950, no, the Breda 950 is much nicer. Um, however, for the price, you know, these were originally a new $35 back you know, in, in, in the day. Uh, and today you could probably get them for $77 or $50 uh, for, for a used one. So they're still relatively inexpensive. There are some better ammunitions out these days. For instance, the Hornady Critical Defense, this is a very good 25 auto cartridge. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this to range and we're going to see how it shoots. Now, in our time out there, we did not have any malfunctions. Uh, sometimes it was a little bit difficult to load, get that slide to go forward because of the way that it does come apart. Now, the way this thing does come apart is you pull the slide back to the rear and you lift up, and then that slide comes right off. And you have your recoil spring and plunger, and that's all there is to it. Uh, now, as you can see, we do have a fixed barrel, which does aid a little bit in, in inaccuracy with it. You know, although these are certainly now what you, you, know, you would say would be accurate firearms. Reassembly, again, you have the plunger, which goes... In the front, make sure you have your uh, recoil spring in, in position. Pull back, drop down, and there you have it. Now, over the years, uh, you know these are these are staples in crime laboratories. Uh, we would see these on a regular basis. Um, very common, these would have serial numbers removed because again, these are disposable guns. Uh, they were something that you, you would use, and then you you would drop them. Due to the way the, the serial numbers were placed on these, we had a very good uh, we had a very good chance of always uh, restoring these serial numbers. And again, what do we do with the serial numbers once we restore them? They go to ATF. Uh, they'll find out what uh, distributor they came in from, uh, what dealer they went to, and then who the first uh, sales were. And then they would try to interview from there. Again, most of the time they were dead ends because most of the time these guns were stolen or they were sold. They didn't know who the uh, who the next person was. So again, generally running on the serial numbers really wasn't really that useful. For as far as cartridge cases were concerned, uh, these had a breech face, which was considered an arc. So there was a, when you saw a 25 auto and you saw an arced type breech face, that was a class characteristic of this type of a pistol, a Beretta or, or one of these. So that would sort of, uh, we, could, we could tell looking at a 25 cartridge case, no, we were not looking for our Jennings, Brico, or Lawrence. It would tell you, you'd be able to tell, uh, for instance, you're looking for a Beretta or a FIE type or a GT27 type. Now, for as far as the firing pins were concerned, uh, firing pins were another problem with these. Uh, you would have broken firing pins. It would be very common for us to have to remove the firing pin out of a reference uh, gun that we have in the laboratory, place the firing pin in here so we could get a uh, cartridge case out of here. Now, once you enter the uh, cartridge case into the digital database, you can basically tell the computer, do not search on the firing pin. You put a note on there that basically would say that this was a, uh, a reference firing pin, so you'd only be searching on the breech face and the extractor mark. Or the ejector mark so you're able to to do that for as far as the bullets were concerned um if we needed a bullet or we had a reason to believe that this was linked to a certain crime uh through an investigative lead um we we would fire it with a uh with the reference parts just to get the bullet out if the gun for instance was in a fire uh, which was not you know it was not too uncommon but not too often uh and it wasn't safe to fire what we were able to do was take a bullet, place the bullet into the barrel, and then take a, a wooden dowel and pound the bullet through the barrel and be able to get the lancer grooves off it that way so you can do the comparison on a microscope. It doesn't matter whether it's fired or not, uh, you're still squeezing the bullet through the barrel, and that gives you the ability to get the lancer grooves so you can do a comparison test. But overall, um, this was a very common gun. Uh, we saw quite a few of these. 
And for as far as 25s are concerned, this is probably one of the best ones. I mean, obviously, they're probably the best 25 auto you're going to find. They get the Breda 21s and the Breda 950s. And this is very much uh, similar to that of the, of the Breda 950. However, the Breda 950 is so much more refined. But for a cheap, uh, inexpensive uh, pocket pistol, this was an excellent design. And I can't emphasize uh, you know, more to anybody who's looking for a self-defense gun. These are too small. Um, as I said, you're, whatever that you would have to shoot with this, it would have to be an awful wuss uh, to be stopped by it. And if you had somebody who was, who was high on, on drugs or high on anything, uh, they're going to keep coming unless you get a direct uh, shot into something extremely vital. Uh, and even at that, uh, sometimes it's very difficult uh, to stop a target with it. So I hope you all did enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.